from she here. She says no one, including the president, should be above the law. The impeachment inquiry really just a first step in what will be a very long process. Jennifer Bellamy is here to break it down more for us. Jennifer? Well, the Constitution outlines how lawmakers can impeach a president, and it's not as simple as it might seem. Article 2, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution says the president, vice president, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. The language from its framers have been used more than 60 times by the U.S. House to begin impeachment proceedings against federal officials, but less than a third have led to full impeachments. The Constitution gives the U.S. House of Representatives the sole power to impeach an official, and the Senate is the court for impeachment trials. But how does it start? The House must first bring impeachment charges as part of their oversight and investigatory responsibilities. Individual members can introduce resolutions or the House can pass a resolution authorizing an inquiry. The Judiciary Committee usually has jurisdiction over impeachments and then would decide whether or not to pursue articles of impeachment and report to the full House. All it takes is a simple majority of the House's 435 members, and if those articles are adopted, the House would then appoint members to manage the Senate trial that would follow on its behalf. Those managers, usually members of the Judiciary Committee, would act as prosecutors in the Senate trial, with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court presiding. A two-thirds majority of the 100 members of the Senate must vote in favor of a conviction in an impeachment trial. That vote would remove a president from office, but has never happened in history. Among presidents, only two, Andrew Johnson in 1868 and Bill Clinton in 1998, were both impeached by the House, but neither was convicted by the Senate, so neither was removed. Richard Nixon was close, but resigned in 1974 after the Watergate scandal, the only president to do so while in office. And the power to impeach allows for the removal from office, but can also prevent someone from holding future office. Any fines or potential jail time from crimes committed in office are left to civil courts. Jennifer, thank you.